Okay, now we've done the tour around the fishery. Jan's gone off to try and catch himself a fish. Um, I thought what I'd do is to show you a few of the items that you can purchase when you come on site, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and just how to set a few rigs up. Um, you can buy various stuff uh, for catfish. Uh, Catmaster Tackle, which you can see. Uh, Catfish Pro. There's various things on the internet. Uh, if you go onto Catmaster Tackle, .co.uk they sell a full range on there so you can buy your Catmaster, your Catfish Pro, your Catmandu there's all various things from all over Europe that they can source um, the different sorts of braid you can use carp braids if you like but we tend to like the more abrasive resistance braid um, this one here is a £110 breaking strain slightly big for this country but just for the purpose of this I'll use this one because it's easier to see um, what I'm going to do first is a pellet rig. Um, the Albert pellets are really one of the best baits all over the all over Europe for catfish. Really, they get used everywhere. Um, a bit of a take there. No, a bit of a liner. Um, so what I thought I'll do, I'll just show you, you can you can put the Albert pellets on like you would if you were carp fishing. I personally like to do them, I'm going to show you now. Um, I've got a few Albert pellets here that have already pre-drilled out. Um, I don't generally buy the pre-drilled ones because they dry out inside when, when you, the time you bought them, they've had time to dry out. These are really oily, these are. These come from GP pellets at Middlewich and they're superb, they catch a lot of fish. So I've pre-drilled some of them out. What I generally do is make a loop in your braid like so and just put a knot in it really basic okay hook length can vary I'd use it about a foot long something like that different baits you'd use different lengths and I'll show you that in a minute um, you can tidy all this up a bit a bit later on when we've finished. Get two halibut pellets. Again, I'd always use two for the cats. If you use one, you can pick the odd carp up. So to just if you're going solely for the cats, put two or three or even four halibut pellets on just to get away from the carp. Thread them on as normal. Now at this point. You could obviously put a boilie stop in or a um, yeah, pellet stop or whatever you want to call them. The trouble is with that, you've only got a small area there, so when the pellets are getting wet and they warm and the water is warming them up over a period of time, they get softer and softer. If you get a take or the fish comes nearby, the softer it gets, they can pick it up and they'll literally pull the pellet clean off without you getting the fish. So what I do is put them on. Two on, like so, and you pull in the braid in inside to the pellet, so you've got a bigger loop on this side. So you've still got a loop, but the knot's inside now. Take the loop over the end pellet, it's a bit fiddly. Okay, so all you've done is you pull it like so. See there, all you've done, you've lassoed the pellet on. <coughs> pull them back down together. Hook size, you can buy catfish hooks in size 1, 2, 1Os, 2Os. I've got all sorts of sizes here. Again, the, the the hook size has got to be in proportion to the bait you're using. So I would never ever dream of using up that big just because it says catfish tackle on it. Don't use it with two pellets. Plenty of carp will still come and pick that up. And if they pick that up and they've got one of them, it won't do the carp an awful lot of good. So have the bait and your hook in proportion with each other. So for two halibut pellets, you want to be looking at a size one or a size two. Again, your size two is still 
still plenty big enough for a cat. Again, for the purpose of this, I'll show you with a size one. Just put it down to the whatever you want to set it, which will be about about so. Just do a basic knotless knot. You could obviously finish off with bits of silicon tubing if you wanted to tidy it all up. There's no real need for the for the cats, they're not as quite as finicky as carp. And there you've got a pellet rig that can dissolve down as slow as it wants, as fast as it wants. That end pellet is going to stay on as is that one there. If you want to use three, obviously just do a bigger loop of and put as many as you want on. You can you can put in Europe they use maybe eight or nine pellets. They say in this country two, three, four pellets is plenty. Swivel onto this end, a good strong swivel, hundred pound, two hundred pound swivel. <coughs> Main line, nice running lead, as free as you can get it. Generally on a, a ceramic run ring is better, so it runs nice and freely. Main line to a swivel, and there you go. There's your pellet rig, a few freebies, a few freebies around it. And there you go. Okay, now we've seen a pellet rig. Another favoured bait for the cats in this country is squid. Um, when I fished down south on Winton's a few years ago, one of the bailiffs on there showed me a, a cracking little way of putting the squid on, popping it up off the bottom. So I thought I'd just show you that as well. You can buy squid in various sizes, I assume. The best ones are the ones from your local tackle store, which are, which are about this kind of size. You can buy great big ones, but they're a bit silly because squid, no matter how big it is, it smells all the same, obviously. Um, so for presentation-wise, you're better off with the smaller ones. Take your squid. This bit here, it's pretty pointless. So pull the head out. You can use that, chop it up, and throw it in as a bit, as a bit of free bait, a bit of extra smell. To keep everything tidy, trim the bits, the sections off, like so. Again, just so there's nothing untoward under the water. Everything's nice and nice and neat. I don't know why this is a, what I always do. There's a backbone in the squid. Pull the backbone out as well. Take that out. And turn it upside down and give it a bit of a squeeze to get any anything loose out that might be in there. So then you've got a piece of squid. You've got a cylinder shape then. That is a little bit too big really. So trim it down. And again, all these bits, they can be used, chopped up and, and thrown in to add some extra smell into the area. You've got a small cone shape then. You get two pop-up boilies. Pop one inside and squeeze it down to the end. And then pop another one in there. By using the pop-up boilies, as opposed to the the poly balls, if the fish takes it and the fish takes it off the hook, let's say, you've not got any issues with the fish actually eating a poly ball, it's just eating a pop-up boiler. The other advantage with a pop-up boiler is by I think these are strawberry, which is a bit random, but you can use any flavours and it obviously adds extra smell to the squid. Rig wise, it's a very basic rig. Again, we'll use this thick stuff, 110 pound stuff. This will be on a free running rig again. I use a slightly bigger hook on the squid because there's, there's minimal chance of a carp taking that. It has been known that carp will take spinners, lures, light, even live baits, um, but it is unlikely. Use a reasonable size hook again. Fasten it on, very basic. Hook link, 
needs to be again about a foot long. Take your squid, you go through and through again, like so. You can use little um, silicone stoppers um, or you can use the tried and tested elastic band. Get a small piece. We're using barbless, which is what we always insist on. No trebles involved. People ask me, can you use trebles? Trebles belong in the pipe world, and even then they should be semi-barbless. Semi-barbed, sorry. Um, catfishing, it really is frowned upon to use any form of trebles. So stick to the single hooks. There's no need for them. Just to stop that sliding back through, Put an elastic band on the end, or like I say, a little stop. That'll stop the squid from falling off. Now when you cast that in, on a running lead again, all it's going to do is sit off the bottom, and the pop-ups will bring it perfect up in the water like so. There's not many catfish when they're swimming around just off the bottom, be at this kind of level. Imagine that's the late bed to be at this kind of level. The whiskers will be down, feeling around for stuff. And they'll pick up on the scent. They don't. They won't really grub down like this because the mouths are upturned. So a classic way of catching them is as they're moving through, open the mouth, and they'll take it as they're going. And there you go. Not many catfish can resist a piece of squid, especially when they've not got to really hunt for it. It's in the face when they're swimming around. So that's how I do it. I have a tip for squid.